Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to Shine Plays. Welcome back to Factorial Beginner's Guide with my friend Avak. How's it going? It's going quite well. Thanks, Shen. Yourself? Pretty good. Uh, what we've been doing uh, between episodes there? I can see well, a lot of new construction. Yeah, but nothing new in terms of what it is. We've mm -hmm. just expanded our battery production quite a lot. We've actually doubled our battery production because we anticipate that we're going to be going through quite a lot of batteries once we uh, get a little bit further in technology. And mm -hmm. ahead of what we're going to be opening with in this episode, we've also uh, set up a mirrored green circuit production line so that we've got all of the necessary components for lasers. Oh, that's ah. right. We researched lasers, didn't we? I Indeed, we in have. Pocket. Uh, they take 20 seconds to build, though, so it's probably something that you want to build in a factory. Yes, yes, qu quite definitely something you want to build in a factory. Thank you very much for that. Now, so, I've actually um, got a few because I was testing around with lasers, much like Shen. I've got quite a lot ready, but this is definitely something, as Shen mentioned, that you really want to aim to have a factory do for you because otherwise you are going to be spending an awful lot of time making these 20 seconds is uh, it might, doesn't sound like much but when you need like five per defensive outpost it starts to add up very very quickly well the good thing about it is the recipe is very easy it's steel yes. green circuits and batteries so once you've done like we did and you have a, a steady amount of batteries coming through your base you can build lasers no problem mm-hmm I'm just going to set this area up. We're going to have a single chest just gathering the lasers for us because we, we're going to need a reasonable amount, but nowhere near the amount that a steel chest can contain. So we're going to limit this to just two slots. Now, as you can see, that's exactly the amount that I've got on me at the moment, which is 100. Lasers stack to 50. Uh, we are going to drop in these here, and we should be good to go. I would suspect there we are perfect so there we are now they need 12 batteries 20 electronic circuits and 20 steel um for those who are interested that's about what's wrong there we go i just didn't have the belt extended to this one this one couldn't reach his batteries oh no he was crying out for batteries but that's <laughs> roughly speaking how many electric circuits that we're producing we can produce uh, the amount of electronic circuits in the time period for four laser factories to use and we are over producing in terms of batteries and obviously steel as well or hopefully hopefully we're making more than 20 steel every uh every 20 seconds or one steel a second it would be quite bad at this late stage of the game if we weren't but right, this so is going to illustrate something it'll take a little while to filter through but you can possibly see it just over here in the middle by the buffer system we are consuming copper a fair bit faster than we are now making it. And that's something mm -hmm. we're going to have to look at throughout this episode. We'll just keep coming back just to see how, how bad that might be getting and whether we need to address it. I suspect we probably will. What do you think, Shen? Oh, yeah. We're definitely going to have to increase the copper production. And it's not so much that we don't have a good copper field that we're tapping. Our yeah. copper field's great. It's simply our copper smelting has not been upgraded since the dawn of time. And we're <laughs> yes. going to have to make that a little bigger. Yes, and pretty that's, much. And that's something that'll happen in your game as you progress, especially towards blue science, which we're getting very close to. Yes. As you get towards blue science, you're going to use way more copper than you did before. So expect uh -huh. to be expect to have the need to increase your copper smelting. Now, but to get blue science, we need something else. And what is that? That will be red circuits. All right. Well, we have plastic produced, which is great. Mm -hmm. Green circuits. We know how to do that. And copper cable. That's simple. Yep. So, so it's just a matter like of bringing... A easy recipe. Yeah. But the, bear in mind, the red circuit is something you're going to use a lot of. Whereas we've been basically making our green circuits local to where they're needed, once you get to red circuits, the infrastructure required to produce red circuits... It doesn't make sense to carry that everywhere where you're going to need to make them. It makes a lot more sense at that point to bring along uh, all of the stuff to one place and just produce masses of red circuits and then filter that out to where it's needed to be used. Would you agree mm -hmm. with that, Shen? 
Oh yeah, red circuits are in many many recipes, especially yeah. robotic. Later on, they be, and of. they yeah they use a lot of them, and they they're not only they're not a quick thing to make, but they are using vast amounts. But one thing I will touch on before we uh, get to that is we did have to expand our power as well. We are starting to run a little bit low on power, and the moment we set up lasers, as you can imagine, that's going to get even worse. So we've doubled the amount of or almost doubled the amount of power that we're producing, but. I think whilst we're, we're sat here talking, there's, there's a couple of things that we can look at which will help us with power as well, just to get the research rolling. Solar energy, that's, that's more of a later stage thing because we can set up solar farms, but something that we can use in conjunction with solar energy is practically necessary, but something we can already use now with lasers is Electric Energy Accumulators 1. Now, Definitely. an accumulator, as the name implies, it stores power. We use them in, in, in real life in different sorts of ways. But uh, effectively, the idea with an accumulator is you're putting energy into it when you're overproducing. And then if there's a sudden peak in energy consumption, which outstrips your production, the accumulator will start to discharge to just kind of shore up that, that shortfall in production. We do it in very, very um, myriad different ways in real life, using dams and that sort of thing for for our power plants like like um just just the the peak consumption can really rapidly increase over, over silly things um lasers will be that because they're not always going to be firing but when they are they're going to drain an awful lot and if it's a big attack a lot of lasers might be involved so you definitely want that kind of backup you don't want to just be relying on what you're producing so i'm going to drop down a couple of lasers and i notice we're getting a couple of attacks up here so i'll just pop those there now the nice thing with lasers they've actually got a longer range than regular guns which means that they can shoot over the top they've got a range of 25 and regular guns have got a range of 17 so you can just line them up behind the guns that you've already got and they'll just shore up the defenses now shen what shall we do with regards to our current red circuit production or rather our plans for well we have a nice area that we've cleared out most mm -hmm. of the trees for we're going to get started red circuit production in this area mm -hmm. and it's simply a matter of small area for green circuits bring in a line of copper so we can get some copper wires and bring up our plastic from the south we have a line of plastic coming up from our oil industry area we just haven't used it yet so this is the yeah. first opportunity for using our red circuits or for using our plastic okay now the other things that we use here is electronic circuits Two electronic circuits every eight seconds, that is going to be something very easy for us to to mm -hmm. match. Again, I said that we are going to need a lot of red circuits, so whatever design that we settle on here needs to be expandable. Right now, we're not going to need that many, but later on, we're going to want to be producing a vast number of these in any given period of time. So, Shen, if you'd like to start laying down a, a kind of basic plan of where you want this factory to be with a mind to expansion, sure. I'll run a line of the plastic up to meet you. Sounds like a plan. I'll get rid of all of these yellow belts that I've been accumulating since I've started using red belts. Uh, they're clogging up my inventory, damn it. I know. But can't you put them into the... Uh... You can, yeah. Yeah, I probably will with whatever I'm left over with here. Just recycle them, man. There we go. Now, having this plastic line just running up through the factory, it, it's not going to be particularly aesthetically pleasing. There are lots of other ways that we could do this, and later on we may actually even look into a couple of them. This is getting very tight around this bus. I don't like that. I, don't, I, I really generally don't like having everything in one space. Where is the plastic going to need to come into this formula, Shen? Where are you uh, thinking? Near, near the middle, so come up about where I'm standing. Okay. And, and then, then the across to the left. Okay, That's I'll it. get that done for you right away. Also, while we're waiting, since we've researched uh, electric accumulators and the next one requires blue science which we can't get to and that's ultimately what we really want to get to I'm gonna go ahead and research something that we haven't done for a long time and that is uh -oh. concrete Concrete, oh right. Yeah, so what is special about concrete? What does it do? Well, we haven't really covered paving at all but concrete is effectively a better version of paving now the way that paving works is as you might imagine if you're walking on paving, you move faster. Also, it looks nicer, in my opinion. Um, concrete is just a better version of that. Now, I can quickly demonstrate paving by placing some down. If you select 
a paving tile it'll give you a little cursor you can increase or decrease the size of this to one tile um two by two three by three four by four so on and so forth it as far as i'm aware it will use the, the correct number of bricks per will, yes. tile but uh, let's quickly demonstrate this i'll use a three by three and i'll just run it along here it sounds very loud i do apologize but if shen and i both stand here like if uh you come over here shen Oh, you want to run along it so we can yeah. show the difference in speeds? All right, yeah. get on the get on the paving. You, you ready? Go. Three, two, one, go. Oh, there we go. It's fine. Look at that. Look at that difference in speed. Now, now this is this is the starter level paving. Once we get yes. concrete, it's even faster. Indeed. And you can do and, all sorts of things with it. You can collect it by right clicking. It's a little bit um, time consuming to collect it all up, but you'll get back the stone bricks. Now these are bricks and not um, actual raw stone so just bear that in mind you do need to bake these bricks and later on concrete it isn't a flat upgrade from this you don't take bricks to make concrete or at least i don't believe you do let me just double check that oh no you do actually use bricks you use the bricks and you convert the bricks into with some iron and water and that makes concrete and then you just lay it in much the same way that we've laid the bricks here i'm sorry about the uh, noise of me collecting all of it but <laughs> another thing to bear in mind is vehicles are also affected by paving so if you've got tiles bricks down or concrete your cars are going to move faster but also you will move faster on the belts themselves it multiplies the effect of moving on the belts. It shouldn't really, right. but Which it does. Interesting. <laughs> just, just something to be be aware of. You can do things as we uh, showed with the biters earlier. One way of dealing with the biters is just have belts pushing them away from the walls. If you put down um, things like paving, you can really multiply that effect to the point that biters will have a very difficult time getting to your walls oh, yes. because they're going to be having to fight against so much, uh, so much momentum carrying them away. Oh, yes. And I keep running out of inserters and blue <laughs> factories. Yes. This, again, this is why we automate these things. We will use a lot of them over time. Oh, yes. Now, one thing we probably do need to look into doing is increasing our production of... Um, well, not so much rail track, but definitely we probably want to look at getting automated red splitters and underground belt. We're currently oh, only nice. making the belt itself. That is going to be squirrely to do, though, to say the least. So we're probably going to leave that one for a little while. Um, yeah, something like that will probably show you the result of it after yeah. we've laid it out, just because it's something you're going to want to do eventually, but it's not like an absolute necessity for every factory. No. It's just something that you probably want, maybe you want, it's up to you. Uh, it depends on, best way on to how much up. of the uh, upgraded belts you use in your factory. It is quite a okay. shame that these things are not one tile larger. <laughs> what things? Oh, the, the power plants? Yeah, the power, the power plants. Yeah. Such a shame. Do you think this is enough green circuits to get started with red? I think um, so. Yeah, I think so. This this will be a lot of green circuits for what we're going to be so using. If we look at the, the main bus here, this is a really good example of how much copper is being used now compared to previously because oh, before be we set up the um the laser turrets this copper line was full it was just completely full of copper and it's not anymore not even yeah. close so yeah. yeah we're gonna have to increase our copper smelting by quite a lot steel as well i noticed we're, steel we're not well, going yes. through the steel nearly as fast though once this is is filled up it's it'll start um uh just it's, back stuffing the belts. I've just dropped off a couple of the laser turrets that I had, just to expedite that process, but that isn't a solution. We no. needed to be able to maintain this production over a long period of time. Right. There's some materials you may be comfortable with just only being produced occasionally, and then having like a small stockpile, and that may have a severe impact on your factories throughput for its main bus just because that particular part of your factory uses so much material yeah. but if it's only a small amount like our lasers it's, there's only gonna be 100 lasers in that box yeah uh, it's not gonna be running all the time as much as i wish it would <laughs> more lasers indeed right i'm just gonna set up the uh, power poles over here as well and then we should be good let's get you going one there and one down there 
Okay, right. So we are set up here. Now, what's the next step, Mr. Shen? Well, this is our green circuits. Mm -hmm. And if we check the formula, we need two of these. We need two plastic and we need four copper cable. Okay. Uh, so we already have some copper coming up for the green circuits. So we're going to need to get uh, another copper coming up for the red circuits because the green circuits will surely use a lot of the copper right. on their own. They're very copper hungry. And this is another uh, sign that we need to increase copper production because this particular facility that we're setting up is going to be really hungry on uh, consumption of copper. Yeah. Wait, did I do that wrong? I did that wrong. Oops. <clears throat> That's all right. We forgive you. <laughs> Just this one time, right? Just this one. Yeah, there only once. You only get one forgiveness, I'm afraid. All right, so we're starting to produce some green circuits. Hooray, hooray. Yep, yep that's and we perfect. Have our plastic. But yeah, <laughs> our <laughs> copper is so badly damaged. But as you can see there, lasers very quick to put down the bite Oh, menace. did we just have an attack? I see, I yeah. see. They're still yeah. getting a little bit close what to our cannons, ones, huh? but. The red ones. Yeah. They're still getting a little bit close to them, but not too much. At this point, I will probably be making a note. Well, actually, we've got a little bit of an attack down the south. So I'm going to go and drop off some laser turrets down there as well. Okay. But next time there is an attack, I'll try to watch the power consumption when the laser's kicking. Because totally it is... Watch the spike, yeah. Yeah, it is, it is quite considerable. You really shouldn't underestimate how much power lasers are going to start consuming once you start augmenting your defenses with them. I will say again, though, where while a lot of people do like to just completely switch over to lasers once they've got it and they'll scale up their energy production to manage it, I really like to use lasers in conjunction with regular guns. We have things blowing up. Ooh, in, we do indeed. In Ironton, they're probably out of ammo. Oh, right. They must have used quite a lot because I did restock that. You may want to head over there, Shen. All right, well, that's a good opportunity to show off lasers, so I guess I'll yep. I'll abandon my production over here and we'll go save part of our factory. I hope the train is nearby so I can catch that and make it nice and quick. It won't be. We both know this. <laughs> Whatever <laughs> you need the train, the train, the train won't be. The train was never in the right spot. Yeah. It was oh, quite often here. there when it's I was here. running for it, but it would leave. I'm on the train. Yes. Really? <laughs> What kind of weird it's voodoo magic. deals have you done with the train conductor? That is just... Ah, oh, I am very disappointed. I think it just arrived because we're still here. Okay. Come on, little train. All right, there we go. I'm not going to alter its schedule because we've... No. The, the attack has already been deterred, so there's no real necessity to get over there. But what happens is if you get attacked in the same place multiple times, you're going to be happy that you have lasers because you don't have to keep refueling it with ammo. Yeah. That's the main bonus of, of lasers. Absolutely, yeah. Wow, the attacks over here. The yeah. number of corpses is is nuts. Look at this arc of spitters. Wow. It's going like to be it. quite impressive, yeah. All right. Yeah, they took out one turret. And it wasn't out of ammo. They just simply focused it down. Oh, wow. Well, the nice thing about turrets is they do do a uh, reasonable amount of damage. If we have a look at the, the guns, they have a shooting speed of 10 plus 7 seconds. And... A, the lasers have a shooting speed of 3 plus 2, 1 second, not quite as fast, much better range. The damage of a, a gun is based on its ammo, so in this case it would be like 5 plus 2, so 7 physical. The laser, 20 plus 8 laser. Well, actually, uh, let me just hover over one of these and see what it is. Uh, damage is 4 plus 3, 8, 4 physical for our, our current guns. Or 10 plus 9, 6 physical if you've got the piercing ammo loaded. And the laser is 20 plus 8. So a reasonable bit more than that. It's about 50% more at our current level of research. Now bear in mind we have been researching laser damage and laser shooting speed right. off camera. So uh, don't, don't be too surprised if your lasers when you first get them don't perform quite as well as ours will. We've just been tweaking the research to make sure that we're always doing something while we're off camera. Right. We, we do spend a lot of time getting things done mm -hmm. and while, while we're not recording, like, you know, planning the episode ahead, figuring out where we're going to uh, put stuff around in the factory yeah. and stuff. And you may do this in your game when you're paused and we just, we've been doing it while we're live. So yeah. if we're, if we're going to be live while we're doing it, we might as well be researching at the same time. Yeah, hey, exactly. look, I'm ready to head home and guess what's here, Avak? I, I, I hate you. I hate you. I hate you. 
But anyway, I went and I checked all the ammo. The ammo okay. looks good on the rest of the on the rest of the outpost. So I'm not going to replace it with lasers there. It's probably fine. Okay, um, that's fine then. The, out, the place we're getting attacked is from the southeast. That little that little neck there between the two lakes. Okay. They're constantly coming up from there. Right. So. And uh, yep, as we as we get closer and closer to. Um, sort of end game stuff. I don't want to say end game stuff because it's not really, but like robots. Well, quite far from like end game, yeah. We're, we're going to be we're going to be using so much electricity, especially switching over to laser turrets. We're going to be using so much electricity that I think supplementing and even replacing a lot of our uh, steam engines with solar will be a necessity just to prevent all these super large attacks that we keep getting. Yeah. Right. Well, we need to get a little bit more work done on our red circuit factory. We've, we've covered mm -hmm. basically what we're going to be setting up here. So I think this is probably a good place for us to lay down a, a break in the episode. We can get the red circuit factory up and running, or at least in its basic form. And then when we return, we'll have got the red circuits going. We'll also expand the copper smelting because we're clearly insufficient Correct. with that we've got a deficiency oh, yeah. of copper coming through so what i'm imagining we'll do is we'll just ex uh, double up our smelting operation maybe even elongate it similar to the iron because at this point we are using it in fairly large quantities and then we can bring you back to see what we've managed to do Sounds like a plan. And once we have the red circuits, that means we can start hammering away on blue science. And yep. that unlocks a whole lot of new research, including oil cracking, improves oil recipes, yes. and all sorts of all sorts of mid to end game research. Oil cracking is a very, very important one for us because it massively improves the rate that we're going uh, well just the the efficiency of the oil that we're using for our fuel blocks but before i leave you i'm going to just start on solar research Dude, not like something plan. we're going to work on right away but it's something that we will be thankful for when it's done ahead of time sounds good well thanks for watching everyone hope you enjoyed this episode of factorial beginners tutorial covering batteries lasers and the beginning of red circuits we will see you all next time for the completion of red circuits and what hopefully will be the start of blue science indeed take care everyone bye bye